9.30. We're sitting on the side of Highway 3. Been in the same spot for, since pretty much 5 o'clock. Um, we we're making good time. We've been stuck here. Something happened at the bottom of this turn here. I'm not able to turn around, so we're sitting on the side of the road, waiting. So I decided to do some work. I'm building the uh, video. Um, well, you might see this after or before. I don't know. This video might be made out and released before this video comes out. Of how to hot shot and doing all the having all the paperwork and like everything I need to do because there's a lot to know and you know I'm writing down things that I have to learn in order to do this job successfully so we're just kind of waiting here I went off duty on my logbook because we haven't moved I could probably go to sleep and someone will tap on the glass and say hey uh, we gotta move or someone honk their horn or something like that I don't know have dinner uh, had some ravioli, had some Pepsi, and uh, are we moving? No, oh, the guy behind me just turned their lights. Oh no, I had the cheek. there's no way that person in the, that Jeep could see. Um, got to meet a few people here now. Uh, the girl behind us met the guy I met in the Ford. I guess you guys don't know, but like, time I spoke about it. Um, the guy in the Ford, I was passing a bunch of trucks. And apparently he has a powerful 7.3 Ford and uh, he's legit said you're hauling a truck trailer and you're like 17,000 pounds of total weight and he's like I was full throttle with the tuner up and I couldn't catch you. <laughs> you're not going to catch a Cummins going uphill guy. You'll beat me in the drag strip but when it comes to pulling weight uphill six in a row ready to tow. There's a reason why truckers use Cummins and it's the most popular engine out there. It's not because it's fast it's because it pulls like a freight train so when she's in gear cruising she just sends it so you're crawling the hill at 80 most trucks can't keep up so it was pretty funny we had a good conversation and didn't really know the guy he likes my facebook page didn't tell him about the youtube channel because i want natural growth uh once i get the new stickers for the truck it'll have my youtube channel on it but uh yeah so we've been stuck here it's 9.31. Probably gonna be here all night, guys. Uh, we got to drop off in the morning. Customer was okay. He understood completely. Uh, I texted him when I got stuck in it. It's like, hey man, um, we were looking at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Some guy crashed or something happened, but we're not gonna make that deadline, that drop off. And I want to apologize. And he said, no worries. He's like, I saw the, the notifications. He's like, there was a winter storm. He's like, completely understanding. And he's like, don't worry about it. Get here safe. And that's all that matters. So he wants his load here and never. Uh, better than never. So he'd rather have it here safe and sound than never getting it at all. And I prefer that way because then I don't have an insurance claim. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue doing this. Uh, why is that not charging? Is this port not working? What's going on here? Oh, there it goes. I just had to plug the wrong way. I understood what those two problem ones were like. You can have the wrong way, you can have the right way. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this. And maybe tonight, if we have enough time, we'll make a video. Uh, this could be two videos. One's gonna be like how to get into it and everything else like that. And the other one's gonna be like what to do. So how to do a pre-trip, how to do a post-trip, how to do a log book, how to do all this stuff, what you need to have in the truck in order to do your job safely, securely, and everything else like that. Safety is a big thing in this job, and that's definitely something we're gonna have to do. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll update you guys if anything happens. I don't know what's going on here. We're just kind of chilling. Thank God we have full service, or else this would be a very boring sit. I have full cell service, four bars of LTE, so no issues at all. Elon Musk, please, clocks, can you please Please release Starlink on pickup trucks already. Please. I would love to live stream my trips. Be cool. Yeah. See you guys when we get the hope. That's where we're gonna stop tonight. It's hope at the truck stop. And hope we get out of here tonight. 
Um, the, the tow trucks have passed us. Uh, Jamie Davis has passed us already, and so did uh, Core, Core Towing or something like that. Q, the green truck guy, uh, Gord. I know his name, but I just <laughs> his company name. Um, Gord passed us, and same with Jamie and a couple of his guys and their road crew. So, and Discovery Channel, which they're rolling in two black Tahoes. So they're following them. They're here. We get used to it. Um, they're always on the highways here. Uh, they hang out, they film when things like this happen, and it is what it is. And uh, we're kind of used to it. If you live in British Columbia and you drive the mountain roads a lot, you're used to seeing these, I guess, I don't see them as celebrities, but I guess other people around the world might see them as celebrities. Um, to me, they're just, uh, Jamie's my neighbor down in Hope. I only live an hour away from Jamie. I've been to his house, I've met Jamie. I've known Jamie for a long time, well before uh, History Channel or no, Discovery Channel uh, came into play with that. So, there's a lot of people turning around. Bye! I wish I could do that too, but I can't because I would turn around, go to the next spot, and go to sleep. But I can't. My truck's too big for the turn here. So, we're sitting on the road! By the way, acid reflux is kicking my ass. Plus, it's just getting way... It's also sitting at a stupid angle. Um, so, yeah. We're used to them. I see them every day. So, to me, they're not celebrities. Uh, to you guys, they might be. Uh, if one comes, if Jamie decides to stop by and say hi. Yeah, Gord was already talking to us earlier. Um, he pulled over and said hi to us and asked us how we're doing and everything else like that. Because he knows who we are. Uh, not, like, I'm not famous. I just, I know the guy personally. So... It was just one of those situations where we were like, we're asking him how long is this shit show going to take? And he said that there was metal crunched together and that it's going to take a while. So it was the reason why we realized that we're not moving. And when we do move, it's just because cars are turning around. The people you see coming this way are people that have turned around, period. There's no cars passing on the other side. This package, uh, the other guy has a CB in his truck. The guy behind us, he asked how far people are back. It's all the way back in Princeton now and a little bit up Highway 5A. So this is a 70 or 80 kilometer um, backup. And for that's um, 50 miles for you guys in America. So we're in the forefront of it though, uh, which is a good thing. We're in the near the front of the collision, just down the hill here, it goes to the right. It's steep. We're on a sitting on probably a 9% grade or a 10% grade. Um, just kind of chilling. Uh, I have the e-brake on. I don't put the truck in park with the load on. What I do is I come to a stop, put the truck in neutral, put the e-brake all the way down and let the truck kind of settle and then I put it in park. I don't want that little steel pin holding back to all this. I'd rather have my brakes do it. So yeah, we're gonna be here. It's gonna take some time. We have a semi rig that apparently got turned around. There is a turnaround point down there, so. Wow. That guy said, hey, I've had enough. I'm going home. So. There's a turnaround point down at the bottom there, so. Some truckers are just maneuvering themselves to get them out here. I'm currently stuck in a position where I don't have that choice, so. We're going to get comfortable. We're going to hurry up and wait. Just like we did this morning or this afternoon on 97C. I was hoping to be home tonight. That is not happening. So, we'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you when we make progress.
I feel like I should give some context there. Um, obviously, like in your mind, uh, probably about 10 seconds ago, you saw the tow truck pull out, or you won't see it on the video. But anyhow, the tow truck jumped out in front of me almost uh, head on with a fucking Ram 1500. I hit the brakes and went straight into the snowbank. Um, and the snow there was, I would say, easily three, three and a half feet deep. Like it was halfway up my door. I could see it out my mirror. And uh, well, the chains and the lockers did what they were designed to do. The guy looked at me, waved me through as if to say, hey, I know I just cut you off and scared the shit out of you, but hey, uh, you can make it. So I just hit the lockers and fucking put her in first and just punched it and she ate. She just pulled herself right out of the fucking snowbank. And we're going uphill and the it's icy and deep snow. So we're going uphill and the truck's literally doing a 35 degree drift with a trailer on, freaking pulling the trailer that's like 10,000 plus pounds plus whatever's in the truck. So we're talking 17,000 pounds of truck going sideways just out of a dig out of a ditch. It just goes, yup, bop, we're back out on the road. That there is why you always have chains. And in these kind of road conditions, you use them because straight up that there, that's what they're there for. So when shit like that happens, um, you know, you can get out of it.
You know, I wish I could set just the iPhone to record in 4K the moment I turn it on. So, we dropped off the truck. As you can see, there's no truck behind us anymore. Uh, that job sucked. So, well, obviously, you know, you see the video. We got stuck on the mountain road. And uh, I'm so happy that DOT was okay with me turning off my logbook. Oh, my God. I got to this. I got to the scale house. Um, sorry, to the Flying J. Not well. It's a scale house too. You can, it's a cat scale. But anyhow, I got to there. Uh, DOT was or CVC was walking around, and uh, we're knocking on doors on on trucks like mine, and they're just doing pickup trucks, make sure everyone's all right, and uh, just a wellness check because they, there's I guess there's people missing or they, they can't communicate with some people. But uh, so they knocked on my door. And they said, hey, how's it going? We're, like, were you on the Highway 3? And I said, yeah. He's like, did you uh, see anyone in the ditch or anything like that? Did you see another car off the road? Uh, maybe that someone else didn't see. And I said, uh, not that I was aware of. I said, the people I did see had uh, yellow ribbon tape around it, so which means the officers have been there and no one's in it. Um, he said, okay. He's like, uh, were you, are you commercial or you just, is this your personal truck? And I said, no, I'm a commercial operator. And they said, okay. Uh, I'm guessing you turned off your logbook on the hill. And I said, well, I ran out of logbook. I'm in violation already. Like I have a violation on my logbook because I end up sitting in traffic for four hours. Couldn't move. And he's like, what do you mean you couldn't move? And I said, I was stuck in a position downhill on a 9% grade where there was only enough room for two small cars to pass each other really. And uh, I couldn't turn around. I couldn't pull over. I didn't know what to do, so I just went on duty and I just put stuck on mountainside. And he looked, he looked at the logbook and he said, "No, nah, he, he can edit. We, we can edit the logbook." And he's like, "No, nah, you can mark this as off duty." Uh, he's like, um, "You weren't like there, you weren't obviously working because you weren't, you know, moving <laughs> for four hours." So he's like, "He changed it to off duty and got rid of the violation and put in the notes his uh, badge number and his name and phone number." And then uh, if anyone has any questions, because it shows I had a, uh, it shows that I have an out of or over duty hours, not an HOS, well, an HOS violation. But uh, he got rid of it and then put it in his notes there. Uh, just in case I have issues. I, like, I'll be honest with you, I've never had a CVSE officer ever do that, which is really weird. Out of the many, like, after the couple of years I've been doing this now, uh, I've never had an officer do that and there's been a few times now I wonder if CVSE has had a change in policy recently because they've been like normally when you get CVSE they're assholes that's two now I ran into that were super nice like polite respectful uh, understood the situation and just did what they they went above and beyond in my opinion oh someone lost a load of straws or someone threw straws out the window but uh um, yeah, it, it was like one of those, like maybe they, I don't know, maybe because my paperwork's in order and I comply and I'm super friendly, super nice to them and show them respect. Maybe they show it back. I don't know, maybe that could be it. Uh, but either way, he was super nice. He fixed my logbook for me, told me what I can do in that situation. And uh, he said, don't sweat it. He's like, you're not not going to get in trouble because you just explain the situation and most officers understand and they know because they probably worked the shift on that highway so they, they they probably realize what took place and that they will correct itself this is going to be a long video it's probably going to be a two-parter uh this is probably going to be part two i don't know it depends on what i see in edit that was a long three-day job three day that was supposed to be a two-day job and back home last night turn into a three-day job and we're gonna be home this evening around four o'clock is when we're gonna be home I am so happy I put a good bed in this truck it is worth its weight in gold however we're well over almost 2,000 kilometers I would say of um, my fuel filter <laughs> it's been screaming at me going hey change fuel filter change filter <laughs> and I'm just like I, I have the filter I just don't have it on me uh, it's sitting in my garage 
So as soon as I get home, we're gonna change the fuel filter. Uh, I honestly doubt it's even due. Uh, because I have a filter on the pump, I don't pump directly into the truck. I pump it to the slip tank, which then I put that to the filter, which is, an, I think it's a 10 micron filter on that. And then it um, goes into the truck's water separator, which is on the cabin chassis, which is two filters on there. It's one's a water separator. It's a fast system. Uh, so one's a water separator and one's a uh, fuel filter. And then I have the engine filter as well. So I doubt the engine filter is going to be even due, but you know, at the end of the day, I still change it. Wow, what is going on there? There's a huge traffic jam down there, down the hill there. Um, so, yeah, you know, we'll get home, we'll change the fuel filter. I run Mopar filters. So, and I decided that I'm gonna make a series of videos on, um, on truck maintenance. So I already have one I'm doing a diff service. So now I'm gonna do the fuel filter service. I doubt it's due, who knows, it could be due. Um, I don't run bad diesel. I run pretty good diesel, so it could absolutely be the black, the black as the ace of spades. It could be, it could look fine. Uh, if it's still white, I'm not changing it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. If it's spotless, I'm not changing that filter <laughs> because they're not cheap. They're ninety dollars a piece, so they're not. And you can only buy one at a time. Normally, I, like for my trucks, I normally bought like a life cycle of filters. So when I go, okay, I'm putting 400,000 kilometers on a vehicle, I bought $400,000 worth of, $400,000. 400,000 kilometers with the oil change filters, fuel filters, air filters, things like that. I just bought all at once. And I would buy like 30 or 40 oil filters and like 40 fuel filters and like a shit ton of air filters. And I would just, that way when I got home, I didn't have to go and hunt for it. I just go, there we go, oh, done. Same with oil, like I have Rotella T6 Zero W40, I have like eight jugs of it. Like not the jugs like five liter, I mean the pails. Like the like 18 liter jugs of it. Uh, I have eight of those at home because when you find them, it's rare. So I always pull in every time I'm out in cam loops, like chopping around, I'll, I'll just jump in the PB Mart and go, hey, uh, do they have it? Going around the back, and like, oh, they do have it. They have two of them, I just grab them. And just buy because <laughs> they're so hard to get right now especially with the, like the pandemic and stuff I've been lucky where I've gone like literally months without being able to find it and I've been lucky because I've had um, I've had extra and I've used it and then there's times where I find three or four of them at a time and I'm like yay so I don't go and buy them because when you need to do an oil change on this thing I do not go any further as soon as it hits about two percent on the oil change cycle here or hours <clears throat> depending on which one hits first. I clock my kilometers and the hours, so if I hit a combination of both, then I change I change the oil. Uh, my oil doesn't even look black half the time. That's something a lot of people don't know how to avoid, is getting soot in your oil and how to uh, clean it out. I can pull my dipstick right now, 2,000 kilometers off my oil change, it's still golden. So that's something a lot of people don't understand how that works on a diesel. Everyone just turns around and goes, oh, diesel oil is diesel oil. It's always gonna be black, even if you put in more stuff. Uh, that's not true. <clears throat> if you wanna know what I do, I run a sulf, like a oil stabilizer. So what I do is I drain it, put it back in. I run a little bit of oil stabilizer and I put 12 liters of diesel inside my uh, engine. And I turn it on, run it for about 15 seconds, turn it back off, let it sit, turn it back on about Five minutes later, run for about 30. And then I turn it off and let it sit for, uh, I think about five minutes, so it gets all the all the oil will drain. Then I drain it and then I put, uh, I pour five more liters of diesel through it. That's all I do. It gets a hundred, almost 100% of the soot out of the engine. <clears throat> and the, the Lucas stabilizer I put in here, in the oil change during the diesel process, it thickens it up so it has high pressure. And it also just, you know, just keeps the bearings happy because diesel oil is a lubricant per se. Like it's a good engine flush for gasoline engines if you ever want to know that. Um, so yeah, you know, you just, it just keeps the bearings happy. It's just something I've done for years. Not even when I did hot shot, just in my own personal vehicles. I've had a common turbo diesel for a long time. And uh, I've had the first gen, second gen, a third gen, this is the fourth gen, I cannot afford 
a fifth gen. <laughs> no one can afford a fifth gen in reality if people were actually financially smart. Uh, where are we? <clears throat> well, we gotta be close to Squamish. I think we are. We're going towards 99. It's the only way out of here, so. Yeah, I think we're close to Squamish now. <sighs> so hot down here. I'm gotten used to the cold now. And now I'm fucking four degrees. I'm sweating. Like, well, it's Corona. Just kidding. It's not. Um, so yeah, you know, we're going to go through the maintenance stuff. I'll show you what I do and how I do my maintenance and services. And I think you guys would appreciate that. Maintenance is everything when it comes to a hot shot. Hey, you know, I'm sunny out of this video. I'm heading home. <clears throat> Unless something wild happens along the way. I don't know. But, uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And so far, on this side, maybe, I don't know, <clears throat> but we made for the job so far. We delivered one truck uh, from Grand Prairie to Vancouver or Abbotsford. Um, and we made uh, $1,500. And I spent a pro about a close to, why? 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 California, why? Buddy, I'm not, nope, not getting off it. You want to learn a hard lesson there in California? Don't jump in front of a heavy truck going downhill. And slow down. He came out. Like, no reason. <clears throat> Go on. You want to pull out? I'm, I'm not. I'm legit not slowing down. I'm right on this chick's bumper. She pulls out. I'm doing the speed limit. She pulls out and maintains the same speed she was going behind another truck. She has not sped up. <clears throat> well, she is now because I'm on her ass. But I'm sorry. Don't pull out into fucking uh, faster traffic and maintain the same speed. Americans. Fuck, I love you guys to death. I really do. I love America. I love everything America stands for. Old America, not this woke shit America. Um, it's just Californians... You're in the mountains. For one, you're gonna get an immediately stopped about another 10 clicks up the road here because you do not have winter tires on. I can tell by the tread. <clears throat> oh my god, I got four wheel drive. I ain't gonna do shit with your old, what are they? Oh, they're Michelin Pilot Sports is what they look like. That's a, whew, that's a brave tire to ride on this mountain road, lady. You're lucky it's plus four outside. Actually, I don't even think summer tires are safe at plus four. Uh, I think seven degrees is kind of like the rule of thumb is when you change it. <clears throat> Yeehaw. <clears throat> yeah, see? Winter tires. You can do that. Oh, she's all over the fucking road. Her car is losing traction. <clears throat> she got, well, she slowed right down now. She took that corner and I saw her car go tee, 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 tee. And Now she's like, oh shit. Yeah, don't come from California. If you are from California, Welcome to watch my video. I welcome you with open arms. Uh, don't come to Canada with no winter tires on in the middle of winter. <laughs> you will not make it. You will crash. You will not survive that trip. Have at least a minimum of mud and snow, at least, in, or maybe an all season or all weather, wherever the fuck there are. Um, but don't come up into the mountains. Like we're starting to get into Whistler now and there's snow on the ground and it's gonna start getting icy. Like look, yeah, we're now hitting down to zero. The higher, the higher we go in the mountains, the cooler it's gonna get. So, <clears throat> you gotta be careful. Nothing scarier than when you hit the brakes and your car doesn't stop. Imagine like hitting the brakes and the pedal just drops straight to the floor. That's what it feels like to drive on ice when you hit the brakes and you don't stop, you actually go faster. <laughs> <clears throat> Four wheel drive can help you go, but it ain't gonna help you whoa. But, um, yeah, we're racing off to Squamish right now. I thought Whistler, we're not as close to Whistler, we're in Squamish. Uh, we're coming down that big windy highway bit, which I love driving this in the summer, like with a sports car. Oh, and when I buy my bike this summer, oh yeah. Mm-hmm, she's gonna be a blast. I haven't driven a bike since high school, so not allowed to, but I got permission from the wife. I can now drive a big, Big like Harley style. I'm not buying an Harley. I'm buying an Indian Bobber Scout or thingy, whatever it is. But um, I'm not allowed to drive a Harley. Apparently, wife said no. And I'm not allowed to have a crotch rocket. Uh, I, I brought that up. Like, can I get a crotch 
my truck? Nope. <laughs> so she wants something, you know, she says luxurious in a sense like it's safe. I didn't tell her it has a hundred horse, but you know, <laughs> she thinks it's slow until you put some performance parts on it and you rip it. But anyhow, um, yeah, we're gonna end the video here. I apologize for just ranting on there for five seconds or for five minutes.